Mouth speaks. I am Great Mother, Holy Spirit, Yin, Divine Mother, Cosmic Moon, Deep Space, the Moon, Dark Matter, the Void, the Black Hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mammy, and Mother Mary. Hello, welcome to Great Mother Speaks. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse. And today we're talking about a mighty journey into the Taurus and Gemini full moon. Welcome, everyone. This is in Scorpio and Vedic astrology. Your full moon is in Taurus. And in the Western tropical astrology, of course, the sun is in Sag. It's been in Sag for a couple of weeks now. And our full moon is in Gemini. I mean our, because what I want to talk about is the sage and the regenerator. That's the sun, because the full moon is that sun reflection on the moon. And so we are talking about that sage in Sagittarius with the Western astrology, which is earth-focused, earth-oriented, earth-centric. That sage in that that medium, that milieu. What is a sage in the Western world? Okay? And the moon reflecting that in Western astrology with the Gemini, the inquisitive, communicator, fun loving, um, you know, du- dualistic, you know, can see both sides, diplomatic. How is that moon reflecting that Western sage? And in Vedic astrology, as you listen, you're going to be looking at that scorpion that is in and out of the underworld and up and down. And that rejuvenation, that kundalini up and down the 10th chakra to the, you know, 12th we want to talk about. The 1st to the 7th is what we can see in those other chakras that actually go two feet into the ground up above our heads into the auric field. That journey of Scorpio, sun. And the moon being in Taurus, which is that grounding, that secure, that real, loyal, clear about desires and beauty and what balance is and experiencing that being reflected by that rejuvenation, that digestion, that processing of the physical ephemeral experience. So we are on the precipice of the ancient times of darkness in which the light shone through. So happy Christmas Hanukkah. Happy Christmas Hanukkah. This is for (coughs) all of us and for all traditions a time where we look for the light because we are surrounded by darkness in the northern hemisphere and mostly western astrology. So it's a time of really getting in touch with that inner guru, that inner Christos, that inner soul of what you know, you know, you know, to guide you to be the guiding light. And in our Vedic astrology, and the reason we go back and forth with this is let me tell you, all great mother has to do is love. And that's so hard for us to understand that we have to look for the light in other words we have to want to know why we're worthy we have to want to know you know what that means to be a divine child of the great mother father god we have to desire that revelation in order for it to be real in us that's the kundalini journey and so when we talk about the mentality that divides the ignorance of our divinity and the living experiential bliss of that experience We're talking about Western and Vedic astrology. Yours. Get your chart in the description box below so that you'll know which one you are. Because when you want to tap into that inner guru, you're going to be looking at your Vedic Joytish astrology to see what's going on with your soul evolution. Because Vedic astrology is moon 
biased, I'll say. It's not moon-centric. It is based on an astrology that is astronomically correct, not astrologically. That's just what we're talking about, astrology. I'm talking about over there at NASA astronomically correct in terms of the actual measurements in the cosmos it's not centered on anything but it is biased toward the moon <clears throat> okay and so we are in lunar cycles with great mother energy that is a cycle that all it does is love on us that's a planet that that's all it does that's all the moon does you look up any definition of the moon it's about connection it's about you know uh, uh, loving communication and partnering and that's all it does is love on us and with a commitment of a great mother because it it surrounds us it revolves around us this whole life is about us you know and the moon changes every two and a half days into a different sign and so right now it is in Gemini in the western and it is in Taurus in the Vedic so in the Vedic, you're going to see what your moon is doing on a soul level. How is the moon affecting your soul in the cosmos? So, so many of us are aware that our souls are not in our bodies. We don't know where our soul is. Yeah, we're alive. And so that means that there is an auric field that sustains this life. But it's a dull mentality. Because it's so dense. But when we get into the soul coming into the body and when we're ready to learn those lessons and when we're ready to tap into that inner guru, we, we tap into the, our, our, our Vedic to see, okay, so the moon is in Taurus and Vedic right now and it's a full moon. Okay, so Taurus means, well, that's earthy, that's whatever. Do your basic and just go through your basic understanding of Taurus and see how your soul is experiencing your incarnation right now okay so the sun is in scorpio in vedic how is it being rejuvenated what types of things is it processing those deep things that you're going through your soul is experiencing that through you like a lens that's been put on a camera it's looking through your, your lens and let's say the soul is um, the operator of the camera. But the actual camera itself is the karma, the composite experiences of that soul. That is its first filter. And we accumulate those over lifetimes. But that's the camera. It has all the bells and whistles that need to make a photograph happen. And that's all a lifetime is. It's a snapshot of an experience. And so... The camera is adjusted right now to this incarnation once it puts that lens on. It's a different lens. It's a different lifetime. So the camera is the karma. The operator is the soul. And the lens is whatever and whoever you call yourself. Your biography at the, on the back of your book, on the back of your snapshot. That's your ego. Okay, and that is what the lens is and seeing. That's how the lens is seeing this experience right now. Okay, and so you can say, okay, well, my Western is that lens, you know, snapping around on the camera, refocusing. And if you're too young to remember those types of cameras, just pick up a National Geographic, um, you know, pre-1990. Okay, and you'll see the difference in the photos. You know, they're more earthy. You know, anyway, this is what you want to do because all Great Mother does is love. That's her job. That is her only job. That is all she does in all the different signs and in the Vedic and all the different nakshatras. Okay, so you want to do the same with when you know that you're being emotional and you all in your feelings, as they say, all in your emotions, that Western astrology. Okay, so we want to make that very clear because the assumption is people who subscribe to this channel either already know this or want to, you know, 
it's the assumption is to you in order to understand what great mother is coming through saying you have to have this very rudimentary basic understanding of yourself in order to understand what she's saying to you because she doesn't see us the way we see ourselves okay <laughs> And so you'll see that once you get hit to what's going on with your birth chart, you know, that's that's a snapshot of your collective karma. OK, that's that that's a snapshot of that. You got snapshots of individual lives. You have a snapshot of the whole picture, you know, and that's the whole picture. And that is how she sees us with love, with the awareness of what it means that she and great Father God have produced a legacy of divinity throughout the cosmos and one of its form is in the human form okay and all her job is is to love all of creation perpetuate it she is the creatrix so if, if that is you and you and, and you were creating the cosmos, how would you see your child? <laughs> how would you see your child? Your child is a freaking bomb, okay? <laughs> and so the stuff that we're going through and everything, she completely knows because forget DNA, we're part of the source. That's our mama. That's our mama. <laughs> so... We get to create whatever we want to create. And one of the things we create is this illusion of not being a divine child. Let, let, let me just see what it feels like if I were to imagine or actually believe. Let's do that life. If I actually believed I was not a divine child of great mother, father, God, what would that be like? And that's what we're doing. That's what we're down here doing. We're playing that game. And Satan sits at the base of the tree until we're ready and we're tired. That game ain't fun no more. I ain't got beat up too many times. I don't like it. Ain't fun no more. Divine child. Once you realize you're a divine child again of the great mother, father, God, and you cannot be tempted anymore to be pulled back into the illusion, he, he flees. His job is done. You ate the apple on your own choice. We ate the apple on our own choice. And once we've digested it, and that's what's going on with this Scorpio sun still in Vedic. It's in the energy for the soul astrology to be regenerating right now. And that makes a lot of sense. Regeneration is death and rebirth. Happy Christmas, Hawanaka. Okay, and so that's when Jesus was born. And at that time, there were 10 months in the calendar, I believe. Uh, it depends. I forget the date for the Romulus calendar. But the Romulus calendar uh, took over the lunar calendar from the goddess era. And so that is what takes us into understanding the difference between astrology and mythology. Now, Great Mother incarnates as the moon. Astrology and mythology are very closely linked. Western astrology is based on the actual incarnation, you know, of the physical earth. And so it's a very yang orientation. And to balance that out, in its mythology, it says that the earth goddess is a woman. And so in order to balance out that very strong orientation, that perceptual orientation of yourself as a divine child, okay, before you are incarnated, then if you're highest science about the cosmos then is looking from an orientation of I'm a divine child it balances out that soul experience it gives it a contrast to where we will be indoctrinated conditioned educated to believe the earth is a semblance of the yin energy 
to balance out that yang, that very strong incarnational physical material orientation. In the Vedic astrology, the cosmos is seen as a more physical material thing that can be measured and calculated then the actual feminine is the moon in terms of its cosmic orientation okay that is the mother and so the mother then is what you focus on if you're looking at the earth whatever planet you're looking at in Vedic astrology you're gonna look through its moon and so if that is the highest spiritual orientation that you're going to have once you incarnate that the cosmos is femininely biased then when you actually incarnate to balance that out many of your earth gods are what you associate the earth with you know is the masculine because it is the actual physical incarnation of what you are experiencing from that perspective whereas in the western perspective the feminine is something that has to be taken care of so astrology and mythology are are the same that's why they're the same and that's why we talk about cosmic communities you know we live in a galaxy we live in the milky way that's just one of trillions upon trillions i'm sure google's we don't even have the word for it uh galaxies okay and so we talk about greek mythology and we talk about vedic astrology and we talk about Greek mythology, and they are so closely related because that's where we get the names of our planets, okay? That's what we name our planets because we observe the personalities and, again, very much personalizing and putting a specific lens on the physical experience. And so the assumption is one would have some understanding of that and that they are two divine children of the great mother, father, God, God incarnated as a God or a goddess. And that awareness is so basic and so fundamental to these readings that I just had to take a moment because sometimes saying that she provides clarity, balance, and confirmation is enough. But other times I have to really focus on we are divine children of the Great Mother, Father God. Therefore, we are divinely and dearly loved. We are dearly loved. And that because of that, there's never any judgment or condemnation. That is such a low vibration, but it's a valuable one because it engenders the desire to know more of thyself. And so, again, um, I highly encourage you to find out both of your Joytish and Western astrology to see where you are in terms of your material focus of the illusion that we are having, that we're experiencing right now as not being divine children of the Great Mother, Father God, and then see where your soul is pushing you when something is really on your heart and in your mind, which is what Great Mother is all about. She's right there with you. And so take advantage. Another way to look at it is just own your divinity and say, my mama right here, let me go ahead and look at my Vedic astrology and see, you know, how she's whispering because she's a still small voice. She ain't going to be on the radio. Ain't going to be a no whole bunch of blogs breaking it down, really, you know, so you understand it. You know, I mean, there will be some general information that we've had throughout the ages. But for you to know you, you're going to have to do some research. 
just enough for you to watch the back of Satan walk away. So you can really feel her love coming through her messages. Okay? So you can really feel that. Enjoy your December full moon 2017 full moon reading. Hi, Sagittarius moon people. Welcome to your December full moon reading. Let's take a look inside that deep reservoir, that boundless chamber of emotional intelligence that governs your personality, expression, that solar energy. And in this full moon, the solar energy is in Sagittarius. This time of the year, the sage shines forth. And the lunar energy, of course, the moon is Gemini. So a need, a desire to express one's wisdom. However, on a deeper soul level, the energy for you, Sagittarius moon people, has to do with a deep understanding, a deep desire to connect with what is really your most beautiful expression in the world and your physique in your work-life balance and how you're dancing with uh, your intelligence uh, that is expressing your physical body, your physical health, your um, relationship to others as it relates to how you express your life's work. Really getting in touch with that beauty because as a Sagittarius moon, the soulful um, expression of that is really wanting you to delve very deeply into that unconscious depth. You know, just, just um, it, it, you, you have on a soul level a, a deep desire to just scale the emotional intelligence within you so that you really can get in touch and align with that. So don't jump the gun on expressing just yet until we get some alignment here. Great Mother's coming forth and she's saying to you Sagittarius Moon people that that's exactly what's happening. You are realigning through a death and rebirth process we have here with the Osiris Horus card. This card has to do with you giving up something of value for something of greater value. So now or up, up until now since the very recent past and I say very recent because this has been within the last three, um, actually it's been within the last month because this is the waxing gibbous moon which comes right before the full moon. And so either it was just before the last full moon, so you might want to look at that full moon reading, or if it is just now, it has just been within a week. So if you're watching this a week before the full moon, it may be as recently as within the week that you are feeling that on a very deep emotional level, there needs to be a reassessment of how you are balancing your life, balancing your energy with work, with family, uh, health, your diet, and you have either changed your diet, you are in the process of changing it, or you're in the process of changing your job, or reassessing how you work and how duties are delegated or in your home how duties are delegated so that you can have more time to dedicate to things that are most important to you in the fifth chakra here most important to your genuine expression of yourself and so you are um, really deeply emotionally in that process right now which is why great mother doesn't want you to jump the gun into that Gemini uh, ego, Western uh, emotional energy that wants to express right now. You are expressing on a soul level right now. You are getting those um, revised updates of who you are now in real time. 
because the transformative opportunity is a full moon card. This is the Sulis goddess of the baths cards, the baths of Breton. And so the water that cleans and purifies our heart that really uh, lets us know that we are in alignment. Of course, the heart is the crossroads between the ego and the soul. And the wellness card tells us in this full moon phase, or for you, it may be as long ago as since the last full moon, you have been in a process of getting in alignment, emotional, health, spiritual, mental, physical alignment. And it's really been something that you've been focusing on or right now since the last week or so within the last week, you have decided to really assert yourself and assert your needs and express what's in your heart about your wholeness, your holiness and your wellness. You know that you can do whatever is necessary in order for you to be in alignment, to, to experience that equilibrium and to feel good. And so this is why you're probably so excited and you're ready to share and you're ready to tell people what you've done and, and what you've been through and why you're changing your diet and why you don't eat this anymore, or why you're redelegating certain duties and activities. And so what Great Mother doesn't want you to overlook is that in the process of communicating, as you do, you now have the clarity that you need since you've taken a beat from her reading, okay, taking a beat, you know, just take a minute before jumping the gun and receiving the messages from your angels, guides, and ancestors we see here with the winged card of the root chakra, balsamic moon. Akhenaten, this is the card that you stand by what your soul has you to do. You are focused on your foundation being grounded in what you know your guidance is and what you know is best for the whole the highest good of all. The balsamic moon is the download moon. So perhaps since the new moon period or just before the new moon period, about three weeks ago, again, within this window of the last full moon and the waxing gibbous before the last full moon, okay? Within the month again, there is a lot of energy that is saying that you have been guided, you've been receiving downloads about what it is that your soul is wanting to bring forth and express in an updated, more uh, real-time way. And so we're not reverting back to old mechanisms, to old ideals, to old ways that um, made us feel good. We are acknowledging how life has changed, how our needs have changed, and we are expressing those in new ways. This card says, Self Savior Messiah. So Sagittarius Moon people, you are saving yourself through the wisdom of your heart and the wellness that you have within. As always, remember, Great Mother loves you, and I do too. Great Mother Spirits. I am Great Mother, Holy Spirit, Yin, Divine Mother, Cosmic Moon, Deep Space, the Moon. Dark.